Coming up, so the Labour government suffered its first rebellion this week over the two-child cap on universal credit and social security payments. Critics will identify Labour's decision to be bound by the Tories' neoliberal fiscal rules as being the root of the problem. And I would agree with that, even though it was probably sticking to that decision that won them their landslide in the first place. What it means, though, is that the Labour government has tied its own hands dealing with the absolute shitshow that they've inherited from the Tories. Broken public services, a failing NHS, a harmful Brexit, crumbling national infrastructure, a meltdown in education provision, a creaking social care system, a homelessness crisis, a stalled immigration system, overflowing prisons and spiralling public debt. This week saw the official release of information that the Tories had tried to keep secret running up to the election about just how bad their legacy truly is. Stay tuned. This week, public spending watchdogs, the National Audit Office, issued 12 different reports about exactly how screwed our public services really are and how 14 years of incompetent, chaotic, dogmatic and inconsistent Tory decision-making led to shedloads of cash being spaffed away. The topics range from NHS financial mismanagement, incompetence and inconsistency surrounding HS2 and billions wasted in government programmes relating to farming, education, carbon capture, road maintenance and homelessness. But let's start with the NHS, as according to new polling from Ipsos, nearly half of us Brits see the condition of the NHS as the most important issue facing the nation. Here's what the National Audit Office watchdog had to say this week. The scale of challenge facing the NHS today and foreseeable in the years ahead is unprecedented. We're concerned that the NHS may be working at the limits of a system which might break before it is again able to provide patients with care that meets standards for timeliness and accessibility. Thanks to each and every one of you, Cameron, May, Johnson, Truss and Sunak, 14 years of mismanagement and underfunding in a failed attempt to turn public opinion against our socialist NHS system in order to usher in a capitalist insurance-based system with lots of opportunity to dole out tasty contracts to Tory donors and cronies. The watchdog NAO concluded that the timeliness of NHS treatment is generally poor, despite the NHS delivering record levels of activity over the past year, and that bringing NHS assets up to adequate condition will cost a whopping £11.6 billion due to chronic underinvestment during the Tory years. Reminder, this isn't partisan labour spin. These are considered conclusions from the National Audit Office report. Some of us may doubt his motives, but Health Secretary Wes Streeting has ordered a review into the scale of the crisis in the NHS, so watch this space. One of the other NAO reports this week looked at the Department for Work and Pensions and discovered that it's failing to meet customer service targets. Here's what they had to say. Faced with growing demand and a challenging operational context, DWP's customer service has fallen short of the expected standards over recent years. It is generally not meeting its performance benchmarks or standards for customer satisfaction, payment timeliness and answering calls to its in-house telephone lines. Pretty damning. Yet another NAO report looked at improving educational outcomes for disadvantaged children and found that the attainment gap between disadvantaged children and those from better off backgrounds is wider than a decade ago. The report concludes that the Department for Education does not yet understand the outcomes resulting from a significant proportion of its expenditure on disadvantaged children, adding... This and the lack of sustained progress reducing the disadvantage attainment gap since 2010-2011, that's when the Tories first came into office, means that the DfE cannot demonstrate it is achieving value for money. And moving on to the Tory carbon capture strategy, the NEO report on this area notes that the government sees carbon capture, usage and storage as central to achieving net zero by 2050, but then concludes that the UK will struggle to hit its carbon capture and storage targets following the Tories' postponement of crucial financial decisions regarding carbon capture. 
And yes, we all suspected that the Tories had no intention whatsoever of sticking by their net zero by 2050 promise, but this confirms their lack of commitment to the target. Next up is the NAO report on efficiency in government procurement of common goods and services, which concludes that public sector bodies are wasting tons of cash via a centralised procurement regime for goods and services. The report concludes that there is scope for the government to significantly improve the value for money for the £125 billion spent on common goods and services each year. So that's another massive turd in the waterways that the Tories have left for the incoming Labour government. On a more local level, it may have become a cliché, but it's still true, people really care about potholes. But another NAO report this week concludes that the Transport Department does not have a good enough understanding of the condition of local roads and does not use the limited data it does have to allocate its funding as effectively as possible. It does not know whether the funds it allocates are delivering improvements in road condition. Maintenance levels on local roads have fallen since 2017 by between one third and one half, which comes as no surprise to me, a regular pothole victim. And yet another National Audit Office report this week looked at the effectiveness of government in tackling homelessness in which they include people finding themselves either with no stable place to live or in temporary accommodation provided by their local authority. The National Audit Office verdict? The situation has worsened since we last examined the issue in 2017. Homelessness numbers are at a record level and expected to increase. The government still has no strategy or public targets for reducing statutory homelessness. Remember, that report was actually drafted under the Tory administration. Another massive Tory mess left for the new Labour government to sort out. And next up is the ludicrous soap opera surrounding HS2. Cancelling the northern parts of HS2, the NAO tells us, will cost up to £100 million on top of the £600 million spent by the Tories buying land and properties on the now cancelled branch of the line, and which they've since been selling off at knockdown prices to their chums. The NAO report concludes that DFT and HS2 Limited must now take the time needed to properly reset and set themselves up to deliver value for money from the programme. Gordon Brown's original idea to create a high-speed rail network across Britain has been bastardised, corrupted and downsized during the last 14 years of Tory rule. And they've now left the Labour government with yet another mess to sort out. But to wrap up, these catastrophic failures are just the ones highlighted by the National Audit Office this week alone. There are many other Tory-created disasters coming down the road. But the strategy of the right-wing commentariat is obvious. From the unhinged Tory press to every right-wing gob on a stick appearing on LBC, ITV, GBeebies, Talk TV, Sky News increasingly and any Laura Koonsberg vehicle on the Tory-run BBC, they all spout the line, when are the Labour government going to stop blaming the Tories for everything? Jesus, it's been a few short weeks. The Tories have been dismantling the public sector for the last 14 years, paving the way for the unregulated capitalism and small state that they all wet dream about. It's going to take decades, not weeks, to repair the damage done by recent Tory administrations. This Labour government has made promises that match about 20% of my personal wish list, but that is infinitely more than the Tories ever managed. So I'll be one of their biggest critics, particularly on inequality and poverty, employment rights and civil rights, Israel, the NHS and Brexit. But bloody hell, already those lazy remarks of politicians, they're all the same, or the oh so clever, they're both cheeks of the same arse, seem to me at least to be really wide of the mark. Sure, Starmer continues to disappoint me in several ways, but already the Rwanda scheme is gone, the threat to leave the European Convention on Human Rights has been removed, and we have concrete plans to investigate corruption, ban most second jobs for MPs, there's a massive reset planned in our relationship with Europe, reforms for the House of Lords, a publicly own great British energy company, the brakes coming off new solar and wind power investments, re-nationalisation of the railways, the outlawing of zero hours contracts and commitments on house building. 
there's so much more I want from this government that they've already ruled out. But for now, I'm trying to be reasonable, aware of just how broken Britain is, and naively hoping that Labour find the courage to follow through on fundamental reforms, to make those who can afford it pay more of their share in taxes, for example, through parity between taxes on earned and unearned income, to ensure public spending levels that provide for adequate public services, providing a safety net for the less well-off and vulnerable members of our society, to redress the balance of power between exploitative employers and employees stripped of their rights, and to stop defending the actions of the criminal Netanyahu government. So let me know in the comments below, what's your biggest criticism of the Starmer government? And conversely, what have been the positives? Please give this video a like and share a link on your social media. Thank you so much.